Okay guys, we're back at it. All right, so we are getting back to work on the Harley today. We got our buddy Justin from Summit Racing out here. He's checking out the beautiful Utah scenery. But I wanna to talk to you guys about something cool. So coming up at the end of August is the Sampy County Fair Demolition Derby. Now, if any of you know me or know this channel or have watched it for a significant amount of time, you know my background is Demolition Derby. So the entire month of August, what I wanna do is I wanna pledge all of the merch sales proceeds to the Sampy County Fair Demolition Derby because next spring, we're gonna be doing our own derby. So we're gonna be doing a YouTuber style derby where we bring in 10 of the coolest YouTubers and we put them in cars and we're getting out there and we're crashing those cars against each other. So make sure you guys tag your favorite YouTuber, drop us comments, let us know who you think is up to the challenge and who you would love to see out in a car because we're gonna be building some of the baddest cars and we're gonna be battling your favorite YouTubers. But the way to get there is we need to use the facility at the Sampy County Fairgrounds and they need our help. So they need a brand new ticket booth and they need to do some repairs to some outbuildings. So that's where we come into play. We're gonna be pledging 100% of our merch sales proceeds for the entire month of August. So head over to RobbieLayton.com, buy yourself some merch, get you a sticker pack, get you a patch, get you a shirt, get a hat, get a hoodie. Heck, buy Christmas because it's going to a good cause. And this is gonna help you guys help us help you get out to Utah so we can put on an awesome event. So let's do this. Heck yeah, let's get to it. And that's the other thing is not only are they gonna go into a good cause, they're gonna look good doing it. That's exactly it. They're gonna have some awesome merch. And when you guys come out next spring and watch us crash some cars, we're gonna be able to meet you guys and hang out and have a lot of fun. So help us make this dream come true and go buy some merch, RobbieLayton.com, and we'll see you at the Demolition Derby. We should get Sean Bikes and Beards out here to run with oh, us. Oh, looks like Hillbilly's calling out Bikes and Beards. I mean, obviously, I mean, you guys probably wanna see Paul, Matt, Rory, let us know, because we're gonna be listening, and we're gonna put our team together, and we're gonna, we're gonna make this epic. So, anyway, we've got a lot of stuff to do on the Harley today. Hillbilly's gonna be getting that brand new Ultima engine in. I've gotta paint the thing, so, Let's get to work. Hillbilly worked his butt off and got all of these parts sanded for his Harley Davidson. Today, I'm gonna take all this, put it in the booth, and we're gonna spray this stuff candy apple red. So the way that you achieve a candy apple paint job is you've gotta lay down silver first, and then you put six layers of candy apple red on top of it, and then two coats of clear coat on top of that. So we're gonna get everything in the booth, get it all waxed and greased, blow tack and static it, and then we've gotta seal it, base it, clear it. All right, you know what time it is? Blow tack and static time. We're gonna get this all static controlled, blown off, tacked off, ready for etch and plastic adhesion promoter. Got to get all the residue from the wax and grease out. That'll cause issues. Get this all tacked off, get it static controlled. Once I get it all blow tack and static, I'm gonna put some etch on all the metal and I'm gonna put adhesion promoter on the plastic. So I haven't actually ever done a true candy apple red paint job. I've done a lot of paint jobs. I've painted a lot of RR vehicles, RR Ford vehicles, but I've never actually done a custom paint job with candy apple red. So I'm kind of excited about this. So just go easy on me. If you guys don't think it looks good, just lie to me. Tell me it does look good. I've got my last bag, last saddle bag to get blow tech and static. And then into the mixing room, we'll go get all the sealer. Almost forgot. We got to etch and adhesion promote. Now some of you might wonder how these parts got sanded. Hillbilly came in the other day and he got them all sanded. We didn't film any of it because you know how much you guys just absolutely love watching us sand. We didn't show that. Now I'm just finding all the bare metal, etching it so that my sealer will stick. So I've switched over to my adhesion promoter, just catching all the bare plastic. All right, done. All right, so I'm mixing up a shade of G5. That's to go underneath the silver. Now, any of you painters out there understand what a G5 is. That's the gray tone for my sealer. So it's kind of an intermediate, but it's gonna be a good uniform color for my silver to go over top of. It's gonna take less base coat to cover it, and it's just gonna be a better product, because it's sealed. Super hot in the booth today, so I'm gonna use a little bit slower, standard, 
This is slow. So I want to use a slow hardener because it's super hot. My, I'm glistening from sweat. So everything we do today is going to be slow, including me. I'm slow. Hillbilly's got a lot of work to do over on that engine, so hopefully he's doing a good job. Robbie's over there uh, painting the parts. I'm excited to see what it looks like. I, per, I'm, from everything else that he's painted, it turns out really good. I think this is gonna turn out perfect. So while he's over there painting it, I'm working on the Harley. Back to work on the Harley, I gotta get the oil tank off and cleaned out. Cause when the other motor went, put metal shavings all through the motor. We don't want to take the chances of putting metal shavings all through the new motor and putting and have it go out too. So I gotta pull the oil tank off, get it all cleaned out and the oil cooler. Once I get those, uh, for now I'm just gonna take the oil tank off, get it cleaned out, put it back on, put the motor on. Cause I don't have to do the oil cooler just yet. So I'm gonna, get after it and get this done because I'm excited to ride it it's been way too long I mean it's only been like a month but that still feels like a lifetime what's holding this uh, oil can in oil tank in is two bolts in the front and two bolts in the back and I'll get these other two bolts pulled off okay I got all the bolts loose and just like this and that Okay, so now I'm gonna take the cap off. I'm gonna pour some of that gas into this uh, tank, slosh it around, and then go out and dump it into the oil bin. Okay, I've been sloshing it. Time to let it drain. Look at all that flake. I'll probably do this a couple of times just to be safe until it comes out clear. But I'm definitely gonna to wanna to do it a couple of times. Okay, we'll bring you back once I'm done. Four or five times later. That's looking pretty good now. I'm happy with that. So, time to go put the motor on now. Okay, so before I can put this in place, there's a couple things I gotta do. First thing is I have to remove this coil pack. The bracket that's holding the coil pack, I have to move off. That should be all I have to do. Oh, I have to put an O-ring on that goes right here, where it seals up against the trans or the chain case, which is this O-ring right here. That goes on right there. So I'm gonna remove this bracket. The original motor. They had a bracket on there also, which is part of the motor mount. So I'll get this removed, slide it in place, then I'll put the motor mount in. And I'll put the bracket back on for the motor mount. Moment of truth. I have to pick it up while Steve puts the O-ring back on. Once he gets the O-ring put back on, then I'm just gonna swivel, swivel and put it in place where it's supposed to go. I think she was made to fit. I think so too. So now I'll get the bolts found and start bolting it up. This is the rear motor mount. This is the front, or the rear other side motor mount. The upper motor mount, which is the one that goes right here. And then the front motor mount. So come to the other side so I can get them put in for tightening them up. One thing I forgot is I have to remove the oil filter to get the front motor mount bolts put in. Wow. That one's not very tight. Oh, because they had to undo it to put take motor mounts out, or the bolts out. So I'm sure they just 
finger tighten them in place so it doesn't rattle and it they didn't lose them so i'm going to want to take some uh lock tight and put on these bad larry's okay before i uh tighten them all tighten all the motor mounts up i like to make sure i have all the motor mount bolts in in order to do that i have to get this top one in too and i my before I tighten up the motor mount bolts, I might want to tighten up the these bolts. Make sure they're all lined up where they need to be. Got to get some Loctite on there. We don't want stuff coming loose on us. Okay, I'll get these all tightened up. Okay, so I got the crankcase or the drive drive chain case bolted to the motor. So now I can go on the other side and tighten up the motor mount bolts. Before I forget, I might want to put this one in now. Put some Loctite, a little extra never hurts. I think that's tight enough. Now it's time to work on the motor mount bolt. The front motor mount bolts. That's going to take too long. Now ratchet and wrench them. Okay, I'll get the other one done and we'll bring you right back. So I dig down through all the parts to find the cylinder head. I because I need the exhaust gasket. Oh, nope, that's messed up. Both messed up. I want to see if it's my lucky day and see if there's any exhaust gasket in all the extra parts and stuff that came with the bike. I doubt it, but I want to see. Yeah, but I don't think I want to get lucky. I don't think you are either. But... Yeah, yep, looks like I better call down to Napa. Okay, so there's one piece that I need off the oil filter housing. It's a center silver piece. The reason that is, is because it has two barbed fittings for hoses to go to the oil cooler. That is an aftermarket added luxury thing. Because before I uh, factory, it just, the filter went right onto here. So this is something that someone's uh, you bought aftermarket to put on them to keep, help keep them cool because they're not liquid cooled. So you keep the oil cool to keep the motor cool. I'm gonna strain all this out so I can take it back inside and get it off to put it on the new oil filter housing. So I'm not too certain on how this comes off. I'm thinking you loosen this and it just spins off. Like this is, uh, is shaft that long and it just goes through with holes in it like a brake line oh. or a brake bolt caliper bolt, but we're about to find out. Yeah, there's another one. So, is everything working? Like, have you guys been checking this, making sure the engines are the same, making sure we're not gonna have any issues? Um, did you get the oil tank cleaned out? So, you would not believe the what crap? was in that. Well, no, I would believe oh, the motor. God, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, that's why I told him specifically, make sure you clean out the oil tank. It's just like a transmission. When a transmission goes bad, you have to flush the cooler lines, flush the system, or all of that goes right back into the motor. Oh, yeah, it looked, it looked like liquid metal started. the first couple of times you flushed it. Yep. But you did get it all clean. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Um, how's it? I want to look at this. All this is working? Yep. All right, well, I'm going to get back to painting. Looking good. You're about to have a Harley again. Okay, got it all, the oil filter. Okay, oil cooler adapter thingy ma bopper that goes on the oil filter housing all cleaned out now time to put it on all right it's all mixed up we're gonna get a lid on it go put it in the shaker for a few minutes so i'm not gonna re-blow tack and static it because i did that before i etched so in theory there should be no static right now in theory all right we got it all shaken up grab our sealer gun let's get in there and let's get this thing sealed 
We're gonna put a coat of sealer on all this, then we'll let it sit for 15 minutes. All right, we got this all sealed up. We're gonna let it sit for 15 minutes. I'm gonna go mix up the silver base coat, come in, and we're gonna get two coats of silver on. So I'm just working on getting everything ran, like all the wiring, the hoses, everything. So that way, we're one step closer of having it done. So excited, can't wait. Can't wait to see how good this paint job turns out. I'm, I'm just excited for everything on this bike. Okay, before I get the oil tank put in, see all the oil that's on it? It's not so chromey anymore. I'm gonna get all that cleaned up because it's gonna be easier to do it, to do it with it out than it will with it in. Now, it's not oily no more, it's chrome. I'll get those put in, get all the lines hooked up and it bolts it down, so it'll drop this hose off because I'm not running these old hoses. There we go. Now we're going to put it in. And if I remember right, it was kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, you had to kind of fish it out of there. I don't remember how I'd done it either. I don't remember it being this big of a pain. Well, there we go. Okay, I'll get these all tightened up. It's time. Time to put the exhaust on. Once I get the exhaust on, I'll put the foot pedal on, and then I can put my brake back on, get it all bl uh, bled. Get one hose clamped right here, and this side will be done. And it's all working on that side. I lied. I'm going to be changing the carb and the breather, the carburetor and the breather, but putting it back together, it'll be done. You just got to figure out how these gaskets go on. I'm assuming like that. So I'll get this all bolted on. Next step is the foot pedal and brake assembly. Uh-oh, stuck the brake pedal, or the pedal on wrong. Pedal's just going on the bottom of the foot peg. Somehow I got it on the top of the foot peg. That ain't gonna work. Okay, so I got the pedal on. Hooking up the line right now, I just gotta tighten down the bolt. Find my bolt that holds the reservoir in place. And then I can bleed the brakes. Get all the air out of the system. And then after that, this side will be most, uh, for the most part, complete. Actually, I lied. I forgot a hose clamp on one of the oil lines. But anyways, this side, once I get the hose clamped on this side will be mostly complete. I can jump to the other side and start assembling the drive chain. And then, getting that much closer to driving it. Now it's time to do the voltage regulator and the brake reservoir. Which, in order to do the brake, or the voltage regulator, it goes under these two studs here. I have to do the brake reservoir first, because it sits right there. And that looks like it makes it kind of a pain to bleed brakes. Oh well, I'll do it. Okay, I'll hang it those tightened up. Next thing is a drive chain. Gotta get that all installed so I can put the case on and then all the 
more, uh, major stuff for the motor will be done, except the carburetor. I'm gonna change it back to the Ultima because I don't like that big god, uh, gaudy chrome filter. I need to find my handy dandy book to find out exactly what the torque spec is on that uh, the main drive nut because I not can't really remember. So I don't want to over tighten it and ruin it or under tighten it and have it come apart on me. Ooh, I passed it. In a similar fashion, tighten clutch hub nut by placing the stepped area of the locking tool in front of the clutch sprocket. Tighten clutch hub nut to 70 to 80 foot pounds and then 95 to 100, or 95 or 108 NM. What is, NM is Newton metric, right? Yep, Newton meters. Newton meters. We don't have nothing that reads Newton meters that I know of. So we're gonna to stick to the foot inches, foot pounds. Right. Now let's make sure I can remember how it all goes. So that first, then that. Rut row. Uh oh. But I had a heart attack. You can breathe now. You got a little scared there, bud. About had a heart attack. You looked nervous. I was nervous for you. Well, yeah, because the riding season's almost over. That would put it out to where I wouldn't have it done until riding season was done. I don't ride uh, motorcycles in the winter. I have a snowmobile. That's when I ride that. <laughs> you know, I have to fight to get it back on. Make sure I'm doing that right. Yep. Probably should want to put a little Loctite in there. Loctite and everything else would be dumb not to Loctite this. Oh, crap. That's like $7 on the floor. Loctiting it is. Ooh. Well, there's another tan. I need to get this off sometime in the future. That much would allow it, I wouldn't be able to get it off. Now I just need to get a torque wrench. Get that torqued to 90 foot pounds. Okay, it's torqued. So we've got my base all shooken up. I'm using House of Colors Glamour Metallic Base Coat. It's an S2 BCO2. It's gonna be an awesome base coat under this candy apple red. So, ooh, look at that. So we're gonna mix this at two to one. So what that means is two parts of base coat to one part Reducer. We're just using House of Colors Standard Series RU312. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stir it up just a little bit. We'll dump it in the cup. I'll mix some more, and then we'll actually shake it up. Beautiful. All right, we got this all mixed up. I'm gonna go get it in the shaker. Shake, sh 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 shake it. And we'll go get some base coat put on. All right, so I'm not gonna tack this off. All I'm gonna do is static control it because I don't wanna, I don't wanna gum up the sealer or anything like that. The last thing I tacked with sealer, I made little balls of gunk. I don't wanna do that again. So I'm just gonna control my static and that's that. All right, let's get this base put on. All right, so I've got the first coat of base coat all the way down. This is a super good looking silver. Some of you might think I'm crazy for painting this silver before red, but that's the process. You gotta go silver before you can go candy apple red. So I'm gonna let this flash off for eight minutes, come back in, put a second coat, that'll flash off for eight minutes. And then we're gonna start on our candy apple red coats. There's gonna be six coats of red. You guys are gonna be brought in for a couple different layers of the process, not all six, but in the meantime, Steve's gonna go check on Hillbilly, see what he's up to, make sure he's getting that engine put in properly, and I'll see you here in a minute. 
Okay, we got it torqued to the 80 foot pounds that it calls for. So now it's time to put the tensioner in. Probably should lock tight those before I get it all up in place. size I need for those and get those tightened down. And that keeps that tight. Now I need to round up the bolts for the or the chain case, and then we'll get it bolted on. Okay, I'm just cleaning the surface off so I can put the new gasket on. Then it can mate and seal 100%. Brand new gasket. A little bit of silicone just to help hold it. Now, my bolts. Because I probably should lock tight these, right? Well, you lock tight everything on Harley Davidson. Especially these older ones where their motor's mounted solid. Okay, so the book says to start with one. Because you have to tighten them in sequence so you're not trying so it's not getting tightened all goofy. It says one's down here on the bottom. And then go two, three, four, five, six, seven, work into the front of the motor, and then you go eight, next one, nine, work back to the back part of the transmission. Okay, right there. All we have left to do now is go get some type F transmission fluid, which is Ford. Cause that's what it, that's what it calls for. Cause it has the special elements that it needs to keep the, to prolong the life of the clutches. And it doesn't allow slippage as bad. That part's done. I've got to shorten those up. That's way too long for what I need. Cause they only hook right here. So they only need to be tops that long. So I'll get that cut, get this trimmed down, and start putting new eyelets on it and start hooking that up. Just finishing up all the eyelets and the butt connector for, ooh, to run the coil and my tack gauge. Let that cool for a second, and then I'll get it hooked up. Ran over to the hardware or the auto parts store got some transmission flush or transmission cooler transmission cooler flush to flush out my oil cooler because I don't need to be blowing this motor up just because of a lack of cleaning. Got a bottle to catch it to show you guys what it looks like. For best results, you use entire content per installation, then return can upside down and continue cleaning with air only until the can is fully empty. Okay, here we go. Let the foam settle down. It's coming out pretty clear. And it's gone, so now you tip it upside down to use the air to clean it out. To clean out the system of any other debris from the cleaning materials. All clean. Now I'll get it all unhooked and rehooked to the block right there to those fittings on the oil filter and the oil system will be completely cleaned. Thirsty? No. Yeah, the folks out there what a gremlin bell is. Gremlin bell is to protect you from all the road gremlins. Make sure your travel's safe. At least that's all I know about it. I'm sure there's more to it than just that. And if there is, let me know in the comments, because I am really curious to what it all means. Time to hook up those wires now. So white is middle, then blue is on top, right? And pink was on bottom. Next thing, carburetor. Gotta get it changed out. So I, cause I don't like the way this filter looks 
and I don't like the style of filter it is. So I'm gonna get this off, get the carburetor off, to put my carburetor on it. So in order to change the carburetor, I have to change out the whole intake. This carburetor is a different style of intake than the other carburetor, so I have to take this one off. Which is two bolts on the back side here and two bolts on the front side. Quarter turn at a time. But luckily these only have to be loose, I'm hoping. By the way, it looks like it's designed. As you loosen these, take the two front ones out and it just slips off. So I think I got these now loose enough. I can pretty much turn them with my finger if I could get my fingers in there and get them to work. So now I gotta do the two out there. I don't know if I'm getting a ratchet on that. I'm gonna have to take the carburetor off in order to get to them front bolts. So I'll get both these bolts out and we'll bring it right back. This should just come off. That wasn't even tight. That don't get tight. Don't it's a, va so a rubber normal. sill, but big carburetor. The throat on it's big. Oh, you want to put it on the Indy 500 snowmobile? That's dual carb. Convert it to one carb. It'd make it ride wheelies. Yeah, it already rides wheelies. It'll make it ride wheelies more. We don't want it to ride wheelies because it is for the kids. The only one that will really be driving it is my middle child, which she wants more power. She always like more, likes more. She's my daredevil. Now I should be able to get to it. Moment of truth to see if I'm lucky enough for just to just slide right out. Uh-oh. It's not just sliding right out. Well, there we go. Slid right out. And we'll show you why this carburetor intake manifold won't work with the other carburetor. And that's because the other the carburetor I just took off is a slip you know, or a sl uh, slip joint style. This carburetor bolts on can't get a carburetor to seal using a bolt on with a slip on intake. So get this put in, get it tightened up and we'll be golden. These bolts are fighting me so I'm just gonna take them all the way out so I don't have to sit there and fight them. Might have to remove that. I think that's what's stopping me. I gotta remove this bottom bracket. It's in my way. So what I've came up with is one side is thicker than the other. So I have to run the new rings off the carburetor or the intake that I couldn't use. But I'm hoping I can use these rings still though. No, near close. I think it's going. It's going. It's gone. I'll get this in and bring you guys back. All right, so I came over to help Hillbilly. I'm letting my base coat gas out a minute before I go start the red. Um, he's having a little bit of a struggle, so I'm just seeing if I can help figure it out. Now, 100% they slide off of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's slide those in. So we just want to kind of figure out how this goes. All right, so we just figured out exactly what's going on here. So this is the Ultima intake off of the one that came with the bike. This is the new Ultima intake. If you go like this and you butt it up together, you can actually see that the R's is larger than the old one by not a lot, but... So Hillbilly's gonna evenly grind off of both sides and get this one to fit in there, and then I think it should work. But I'm gonna go back in and do some red, so Steve's coming with me. We've gotta get that thing cleared up. And hopefully before you come back, you'll be ready to go in place. All right, so we're gonna be mixing up the VC5700 
We're gonna use it as an interlock clear with red concentrate in it. So I'm gonna look up the TDS, but the way it works is we're gonna mix up our clear at 15% by volume of the red candy and go in and bury that thing in like five to six coats of red. What I meant to say is that we're gonna be doing this as a lockdown clear, but we're gonna be adding the red toner, we're gonna to be adding the red concentrate into it. So at normal temperatures of 70 degrees, we have a five to 10 minute between coat flash time. It is 92 degrees in there. So at 70 degrees, if it's five to 10 minutes, for every 10 degrees, it cuts your time in half. So if we're going up 30 or 22 degrees, it's gonna cut our 10 minutes by half and by half. So basically, we're gonna have two to three minutes in between coats and that's it because of the temperature. So anyway, we're basically gonna be back to back pounding this stuff on, but it's gonna be okay. It's gonna make it go a lot quicker. So I'll hurry and mix this up and we'll get in there. We'll tack it off. We'll blow, well, we'll blow tack and static it. And then we're gonna get our red going. All right, so we've got it mixed up two to one to one. Now we're gonna take our weight and figure out 15% of it. So we're gonna do 111, 111 grams of color. Zero our scale out. We're gonna do 111 parts of red. Okay, we'll get that mixed up. We'll get in there and we'll start getting it on. The time has come again. It's time to blow tack statics this out. And get ready for all of that candy apple red goodness. So normally, I put a coat on and then I bring you in when it's done. But where this is such a multi-layer process, I'm gonna put on three coats and then I'll bring you guys in. Then I'm gonna put on another three, bring you guys back in and show you just what this looks like after six coats of candy apple red. And then we're gonna have to put two to three coats of normal clear coat on top of it. I'm excited. I'm excited to see this. I'm excited to show you guys. And I'm excited for Hillbilly because he's gonna have himself a cherried out Harley Davidson. One thing you're gonna notice on the first coat, it's gonna look terrible. It's gonna be super, super blotchy, but that's normal. You don't wanna build all of your candy in one coat or it'll run like crazy. So before you scald me in the comments, just know it's meant to look like that. We're using our SATA RP, turn the air pressure down to 29, and away we go. So what I'm trying to do is even coat. I don't want to bury it like normal clear and get super amounts of red or it'll change the color. So I'm trying to be trying to be consistent and even. All right, so I've got my first coat of candy apple red down. We're gonna let this sit for five minutes. I'll come back in, I'll put another coat. Let that sit five minutes, blah, blah, blah. I'll get three coats in and then I'll bring you in and just show you what it looks like. Then I'm gonna intermediate bake it for 20 minutes at 120. Come back in, three more coats. After that, we're doing two normal coats of clear coat. So this thing's gonna be stacked with eight coats of clear. It's gonna look so deep. Moment of truth to see if the filing I've done is enough or not. I'm hoping it is. What's the way my luck's going? It's probably not. Oh, Betsy. Perfect. Now, if you want to have me let red lock tight, get these in and tightened. I mean, that will be that much more closer to being done. 
I'm sure Robbie's pretty close to being done. Come on, come on, let's make sure. Please, please, please. All right, there should be where I need to be. There it is. All right, get those tightened down, get their back tightened down, and then get the carburetor put back on it. About done, just gotta take and change uh, these bolts because they're just a hair too long. So got this one changed out, just gotta pull this side out, go get it changed, and then tighten them back ones. And Okay, while I have the carburetor off, I'm gonna hurry and hook up the throttle. So there's two cables. When you twist back, it sucks it in. Then when you twist forward, it sucks. So that way if the car, if it gets stuck wide open or it has a it catches or something, you can help it go back. I mean, not much help because obviously it's a cable, but always once in a while, it just it's just that little less or that little bit of mo or pressure it needs to actually kick back. That one goes to this back hole. So you go in, around, pull, and in. And same with this one. In, around, twist the throttle. Now, <coughs> I can bolt it all up. There's no ring in there. That seals this to the intake. So you wanna make sure the O-ring is facing the intake. On the carburetor, there is an O-ring. And that seals against the plastic ring I just stuck in. See? Gasket right there, or O-ring right there. And then, bada bing, bada boom. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. Once I get the brakes, brakes bled, then I can put, then I'll put the uh, cover back, the air filter on, and then just double check all my baggies to make sure there's none, and go over the bike and make sure everything's all put together. And make sure I'm not missing anything anywhere. Okay, I'll start pumping. The smallest I got is a six millimeter, and I had to dig through all my wrenches to find it, so. If it doesn't fit, then oh no. What the heck? It's too small. Can't be a quarter, because it's, it's a quarter is equivalent to a seven or an eight. I think it's eight. No, quarter is maybe equivalent to either a six and a half or a seven. No. 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 What size is that? Quarter. No, what size is it? Quarter. I told you. No, you did. Yes, I did. Do one good pump with it open. Now, tighten it up. Fluid still full. It just got real hard. A little bit of air. Push it as far as you can. Push. Put your weight into it, Johnny. Okay, hold it. If it's already bled that quick, this is the easiest I've ever bled on an ATV. It's not an ATV. Dirt bikes, four wheelers, snowmobiles, road bikes, they're all in the same category when it comes time to bleeding brakes. If it's already done, then it's the easiest one I've ever done. Okay, we're going to uh, let off the pedal and let it set for a minute, and then we'll fill it again to make sure it's rock hard and not going soft on us. All right, so I put three coats of red down. I short baked it for 20 minutes at 120. I came back in and did three more coats. I was gonna bring you guys in, but I'm by myself for a minute. I sent the guys to go get some food. They're gonna be coming back, but I got the other three coats on. So we are six coats deep in this candy apple red. I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like. It looks so dang good. It's super deep. You can tell that there's a lot of candy apple on it, but I'm gonna add two coats of clear on top of this so that it gives it even more depth. I think Hillbilly's gonna love it. I wouldn't let him look at it. I think he's got the bike just about finished up. So as soon as we get this clear on it, I'll call him back. We'll have him take a look at it. And then we're gonna let this sit overnight and dry up. But I'm super excited to Rick and Chrissy for donating this bike to Hillbilly. Thank you. I'm honored that I get to paint this. He's gonna have a brand new cherry red candy apple Harley and he can't 
be any more excited. So we're gonna have a brand new 127 Ultima in it, brand new paint job. This bike is basically brand new for Hillbilly. I'm super excited and I'm happy about it, but enough of that. I'm gonna get this cleared so that I can take off also. So I got my first coat of real clear on. I'm gonna let this sit for 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna come back in and put my second one, show you guys what it looks like, but this is so awesome. I wish you could see it in person. Looks so good. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the breather off. I was gonna put it on, but I just barely decided to leave it off until everything's painted. So that way, if, once we get the tank and if they're, I can't remember where the bolts are for the tank, if the filter's in the way, I'll have to take it off again, so I'll just leave it off. Shove a rag in there so nothing can get in. But let's go see what it looks like. I haven't seen it yet. I'm excited to go look at it. So I've worked all day long, and Hillbilly hasn't been allowed to see the paint job. So he's been in hard at work. I went and got him. Justin was helping him. Now they get to see the bike parts for the first time. So let's go get the reaction and then let's go check out what Hillbilly got done. All right, Hillbilly, here's your bike. Can I go put it on now? No, it's still wet. Don't touch it. Check it out. I like that color. I love it. It's so deep. What do you think? Like, does it look good? If it what didn't look good, I would say we got to redo it. He star he's starstruck. Anyway. How many coats did you put on? Six. So that's what candy apple is supposed to look like. It's supposed to look super deep and then have the clear coat and everything adds depth. I feel like the paint, like I said, you can just look miles and miles into it. Yeah, look at this. That is way awesome. So that's what silver does. But see how all the metallic has such depth to it? That looks way awesome. So when the sun hits it, turned out pretty good. Came out way awesome. I like it a lot. Now you can say you've done a uh, candy apple red for the first time. And I don't ever want to do it again. Oh, looks way awesome. And that, folks, is what candy apple red looks like. It's gonna look real good once I put black lights underneath it. I think black light will make that sh pop even more. We're gonna let this run out for 24 hours. I'm not gonna shut the booth off because there's so much clear that I want all of the gases or I want all of the solvents to gas out correctly. So we're just gonna keep the booth running and let it just flow past it. So let's go check out what Hillbilly's got done. All right, so it looks like Hillbilly's got the carburetor and the intake on. Where are you at on this as far as what needs to be done now? Looks like the throttle's on. Waiting for body parts. So you're ready to go? Mm-hmm. Okay. So in theory, you need oil and a battery and gas and this will start. Yeah. Perfect. Well. It's coming along. We've got this to the point where all it needs to be done now is reassembled, and then it should start. One other thing, a package came for Hillbilly, so we're gonna have him open that, and then a package came for me. So my package came from Frederick Andreessen. He's an overseas, it says overseas military diplomatic mail. So I'm assuming he's probably in the service. So thank you for your service. We got a cool patch and a coin. I like those coins. It says Nor, Sick, nor sec for VI TF biking. You know what those are, cool. don't you? I have no idea. They're challenge coins. Oh, and then some candy. And I freaking love these. I don't know what it is. I can't read it, but I'm gonna try it. So thank you. I appreciate it. And my package came from Tom Hayden. Hayden and Tom Hayden Enterprise. And it says Hillbilly's Harley. Some good candy. All right, so thank you Hayden Enterprises for this automatic primary chain tensioner. Hillbilly's gonna have to take that all back apart to put this in because we didn't know we got it. So, as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.